Today we have championship case number four. We're going to talk about yesterday's championship case, his owner, Denny Hamlin. I can see the jokes in the comments now, guys. I see them, okay? I get it. He hasn't won a championship. We all get it. Anyways, Denny Hamlin, we're going to talk about his chances at winning the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. He's talked about it all year. He said this is his year. Is it indeed Denny Hamlin's year? This is what his year has looked like up to date. Three wins, eight top fives, the nine top tens. Those three wins came at Richmond, Bristol, and Dover. He's led 772 laps, which is the most in the Cup Series this season. He has six stage wins as well, so a grand total of 21 playoff points. That's the first point I'm going to make. Like I said with Larson, Reddick, and Elliott, there's no such thing as too much playoff points, guys. Now, unlike Reddick and Elliott, Hamlin has some playoff points to his name already. He's currently 43 points behind Kyle Larson for the regular season lead. But it's not completely unrealistic to win the regular season championship. So I say make a push, go win the regular season championship. You got Richmond you just won at. You got Darlington, a really good track for you in there. Michigan, a great track for Toyota. Um, so some really good tracks for Denny Hamlin to potentially go and win that regular season championship. If you can't, though, go win a race or two. Go win some stages. Get some bonus points because there's no such thing as too many playoff points. But as we look through this playoff schedule, how is Denny Hamlin going to advance through the rounds? How is Denny Hamlin going to get himself his first NASCAR Cup Series championship? Well, this first round consists of Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and Bristol. Two of these tracks... Uh, Atlanta's kind of a toss-up. It's a super speedway, and Denny Hamlin historically has been a great super speedway racer. He's won multiple Daytona 500s. He's won at Talladega multiple times. But in the next-gen era, he's yet to win at a super speedway. In Atlanta, since the reconfiguration, three finishes of 23rd or worse, only one top 10, and it was a top five back in the spring of, or a top six. Sorry, I can't read. It was a sixth-place finish. Back in the spring of 2023, so not great numbers there, but with the points cushion, and I expect him to score stage points in this race, even if he gets involved in something, other playoff drivers drivers will be involved, and you've got some bonus points to, you know, pad yourself in that first round. As for the next race, Watkins Glen, Denny Hamlin's never been a great road course racer, but Watkins Glen is where he has his one and only road course win, and in fact, he has three top fives in his last four starts at Watkins Glen. Has scored a lot of stage points in both of those rate or those last four races. So Denny Hamlin, actually, for a road course, this is his best one out of what could have been. So uh, Watkins Glen being in there is fine. I think he'll score some stage points there. I don't think realistically, I don't think he'll be competing for the win with Kyle Larson, William Byron, Christopher Bell, guys like that. But I think he'll be in the top 10, scoring stage points, doing what he needs to. He just can't afford, you know, a massive mistake, a brake failure, a car failure of any sort. But overall, I think he should be fine in this race. He should run top 10, top 15 or so. And then we go to Bristol. Even if he does bad at Watkins Glen, even if he crashes at Atlanta and he's somehow put in a deficit, well, he's won the last two Bristol races. In fact, he's led over 140 laps in these last two Bristol races. Denny Hamlin at Bristol is, at this point, it's a force to be reckoned with. Denny Hamlin has this place figured out. He's done a great job. If the tire fall off is as extreme as it was in the spring, uh, then maybe we could see Denny Hamlin conserve those tires once again like he did in the spring. But Denny Hamlin, this first round, I'm not really concerned about. I know Atlanta is a super speedway. Watkins Glen is a wild card with a guy who's not a great road course racer. That's usually concerning, but realistically, he gets out of this first round, let's be honest. And even if he's in a tough situation at Bristol, he's going to be the favorite heading into that race. He's going to be leading laps, scoring stage points, maybe even some stage wins, and he might be the winner of that race. Then we go to that second round, and it's almost a, an invert of... That first round, the first round we see the wild card is the first two, and then the normal race is the third. Well, this one we see the normal race is the first one, and then we got the wild cards next. And just like Bristol, Kansas is a great track for Denny Hamlin. He has four wins at Kansas, including six consecutive top five finishes at this track. I expect Denny Hamlin to be competing for this win with his teammate, 
Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, maybe even Tyler Reddick will be up there. Kyle Larson will be up there. But Denny Hamlin will be running top five in this race. He'll be competing for the win. He'll be leading laps. He'll score a lot of stage points. That way, when they go to Talladega the next week, he might have a win in the bag. And even if not, he's going to be in a really good point situation. And even if you look at his Talladega Next Gen numbers, they're not that bad. He crashed in the spring and finished 37th. But other than that, his worst finish has been 18th at the track. He scored stage points every once in a while. In fact, he's led laps in the last nine Talladega races. So Talladega, as I said, Denny Hamlin, a great super speedway racer. Even though this next gen era hasn't been as kind to him, but he's still going to be competing for that win. And it's a wild card. If he wrecks, other guys are going to wreck. And then we go to the Roval. And I would say this is my biggest concern if Kansas, something happens, a tire blows out. If Talladega, he crashes out and his back's against the wall going into the Roval, they're going to have a problem because the Roval is not great for them. Only one finished better than 13th. It was a top five back in 2021. He's only led laps in one of the six races run at the Roval, and he's only scored stage points twice at this track. So, yeah, the Charlotte Roval is not his best track. But realistically, I think he finishes top five at Kansas. I think he does enough at Talladega to where he doesn't have to worry about the Roval. But the easiest way to do this, win at Kansas. And then we go to this round of eight. And if Denny Hamlin goes into the round of eight, just like I said with Kyle Larson, I am extremely confident that Denny Hamlin gets to the final four. He has the bonus points. He could have an extra win or two heading up to this point. He could have won the regular season championship. So he might have 40 or so playoff points. And we're going to three tracks that are really good for him. Vegas being the weakest, the first one of the three. And he has a win at Vegas recently back in 2021. He has three top tens in his last four starts. He's led laps in nine consecutive Las Vegas races. Ran top five most of the race in the spring before ultimately finishing eighth. And Toyota's just really good at the mile and a half tracks. And as I said, that's his weakest track because we go to Homestead next. And while he finished 30th last year, he ran really well in that race, was competing for the win with Ryan Blaney, Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, before ultimately having a part break and causing a crash. But he has multiple wins at Homestead Miami Speedway. I think it's three to be exact. He runs up front at this track. He knows how to get it done. He's got a great shot at winning this race. But even if Vegas goes wrong, even if, let's say, Homestead goes wrong, another part failure, I tell you what. Martinsville is the race Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has six wins at the Virginia Short Track. He's led laps in seven of the last eight races there, including triple-digit laps led in four of those eight. So Denny Hamlin knows how to get it done here. As I said, he's won a bunch here. He's led laps here. And in the spring, he was contending for the win, and he finished 11th, but that doesn't reflect his day. When there was a caution with two to go, they ultimately decided to pit, and that just kind of screwed their day in a sense. So... I expect Denny Hamlin to be competing for the win with Chase Elliott, William Byron, Kyle Larson, guys like that. Denny Hamlin, if he is back against the wall, unlike this last round with the Roval, I expect Denny Hamlin, if his back's against the wall, he could very well get it done. He could win his way into the championship four. So those first two rounds, they have their moments that could be shaky. This third round, though, I really like for Denny Hamlin. I don't anticipate him having a lot of problems. I anticipate him competing for the win in two of these races for sure, and more than likely, all three of them. And even if he doesn't win them, he'll finish in the top five, top ten, score a lot of stage points. And with all the bonus points he has, that'll be enough to get him to Phoenix. And Phoenix usually would be a concern for me, for Denny Hamlin, and more specifically Toyota. But as I said yesterday with Reddick, Toyota's improved a lot at Phoenix this year. Denny Hamlin... Started on pole, led 68 laps, scored stage points before ultimately spinning himself out, kind of setting them back that day, and he finished 11th. But Denny Hamlin had one of the best cars in the spring with his teammates. And Toyota, as I said, I think they're going to be the favorite heading into this championship race after what they did in the spring. So to wrap this thing up, first two rounds, you just got to survive. You've got the playoff points. You can have, you got one mulligan, essentially, to you know set yourself back. But... Kansas, you're going to be a favorite. Bristol, you're going to be a favorite. That'll make up for any errors. And then that third round, as long as you don't have any massive errors, you're going to be competing for the win in all three of those races. And if you get to Phoenix, well, obviously anything can happen. The top three can write blah, blah, blah. But Toyota has improved a lot over the past year. 
at Phoenix. Thank you for watching this video. That is championship case number four. Check. We've got 12 to go. Tomorrow will be Ryan Blaney, the defending NASCAR Cup Series champion. Can he make it back to back? Um, but Denny Hamlin's championship case is complete. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'm sure I know what they are. But uh, very interesting. Very interesting comments all the time on this video when I do this every year. But uh, we'll see if this is Denny Hamlin's year indeed. And as I said, I'll see you tomorrow for Ryan Blaney.